Hello everybody, Chris here. Hey, today I wanted to share with you a little project that we finished a while back in the baby room. It's uh, little bookshelves for Harrison's room and they are basically just little silhouettes of some sceneries. Our theme for the nursery is an adventure theme type of an idea and we thought that uh, traveling to different parts of the country and seeing different sites would go with that. One of the things we wanted to do for the baby room was uh, get a lot of books, uh, have enough books to make his own little library. And when you have a lot of books, you gotta have a lot of storage space. And thanks to so many generous friends and subscribers, we have lots of books, and a lot of them Halloween books. So I'm gonna get to read spooky Halloween books to scare him before he goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> So the first thing we did is we looked online, we found some silhouette ideas. Also, Gina found a really cool snow-capped mountain uh, bookshelf design idea, and I just loved it so much, I went ahead and just wanted to recreate that. So once we finished the mountain shelf, we were like, hey, since we have a beautiful snow-covered mountain range, like the ones I grew up with in the cold northern frozen state of Alaska, land of the frozen nose hairs in the wintertime, howdy. <laughs> Mosquitoes the size of birds in the summertime. So then we were like, hey, we should make landscapes from other places we've lived. It could make for some conversations with our son, right? You know, sitting in his room going, hey, we've lived there, 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 there. Just kidding. We didn't move that much, but we've lived in a lot of places. So we decided to also make a silhouette shelf of the beautiful blazing hot Arizona desert sunset with dry rocks and big sharp needle covered swirl cactuses, home to the lizards, scorpions, tarantulas, and snakes. Why they have to be snakes? That's my rattlesnake, so. And of course we had to create a shelf where we live now, a silhouette of skyscrapers, bridges, commercial buildings, homes that are this close together for millions and millions of wonderfully delightful, beautiful, friendly people, all stuck in rush hour traffic bumper to bumper for hours and hours. Get out of my way, you road hog! You too, buddy. Sorry, where was I? Another silhouette that we made was one, like a coastal scene, for, like an organ, uh, like with a dock and boats, the ocean waves, where there's lots of things underneath, like sharks. Bottom, bottom. We even did one of those things like a buoy from the movies where people always seem to try to swim out to but they never can make it because Jaws always eats them first before they get to it. I think we're going to need a bigger bookshelf. And then of course a lighthouse. You got to have a lighthouse. If you're going to have an ocean picture you, with the cliffs and stuff, you got to have a lighthouse. With a little lighthouse keeper's house and a little pickup truck. Pretty cool. So for the materials, we had some older one by six pine boards laying around from an older project that we worked on. And then I went to the hardware store and I picked up some new one by fours, just some cheap boards that we picked out, you know, trying to find uh, nice straight ones without any knots and stuff in it as best we could, you know, ones for like four bucks a piece or three bucks a piece. I knew we'd be using a jigsaw to cut out the shape. So the less knots in the wood, the better. If any of you have ever used the jigsaw and you're cutting through any kind of wood with knots in it you know that things get a little bit complicated so we want nice good pine not nutty pine i think i'm going a little bit crazy from all the lack of sleep from being a new father ooh, ooh, cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, you can make this any width you want uh, i'm making it specifically to the width of a section of the wall behind the door because the door opens up and hits a doorstop i really can't make these very wide so this is all the wider i'm going to make it I'll still be able to put like three or four books stuffed in here. Plus I'm making, you know, so many of them that it should be fine. The idea is to draw yourself a, a, a simple little shapes and stuff that you can cut with a jigsaw and then go back in sanding with like files and sandpaper and stuff. This piece will go right here. We will then have some little side pieces. Then you'll have a front section that's just a little bit shorter and it'll get nailed on there. And you should be able to see through this scene and see the back. Now when there's books in here, obviously you're not really gonna see the back. You could just do like a straight section. I just wanted to get a little bit fancier and make it make more sense. Um, and then as you're pulling books out, maybe it'll be like, ooh, yeah, I get to see a little part of the scene. This one is our coastal scene. What I got here is this is just sea. 
and I tried to add some stuff in here. I'm going to see how it's going to go as I cut things out, but the plan is to drill out some of these little pieces right here and then cut out so you can actually see through it. I get kind of scared with little pieces of wood getting that small, but we'll see how this goes. So after I got everything all cut out with the jigsaw, now I'm going in there with a drill bit and I drilled out some holes as much as I could. And then I'm also going in with the Dremel. I've got this kind of tip and then I've got like a little sanding drum. And I'm just going to clean up some of these little edges of the dock and my little waves. Um, the next thing after that, once that gets cleaned up, I'm probably going to go ahead and staple and glue these little pieces on there. Go ahead and get it together. All right, so I got the sides and the bottom all pin nailed into place. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little router with this little eighth inch round over. And I'm just going to go around the edges, kind of round everything over, give it a light sand. Then, last, I'll go through and kind of clean up some of these little edge marks, make them a little bit more definite. For the finish, we used a steel wool and vinegar solution followed by a polyurethane clear coat. The old wood ended up having some darker age to it, and then the new wood was lighter in the front. And then as you remove books and stuff, you'll see the back. So it kind of is a little bit of a surprise and some detail, you know. It gets lost though when it's packed full of books. And then what I did is I drilled two holes on each side. After I drilled some hole in the drywall, I punched in one of those plastic anchors and then put it in that way. It was a really fun project. It's easy to do. It's just a little bit time consuming. It was one of those kind of projects where when you start, you're like, yes, this is a great idea. Oh gosh, this is a lot of work. And fourth shelves into it, you're like, I just want to get this done. And then the shapes start getting a little less detailed and you're just like, you know what? I think that looks good. <laughs> done. What's really cool is you could do any kind of scene you wanted. Like, I mean, even if you wanted to do some cartoon scenes or scenes from movies or anything like that, it's a great, cool, little, neat idea that adds a, a nice element to any room of any kind of theme for that matter. But uh, yeah, I hope that that inspired some of you guys, gave somebody some ideas. Maybe the next time we make these shelves, we'll make like a haunted house or a cemetery scene or something. Maybe the different holidays. Be sure and let us know in the comments below what type of theme shelves or different landmarks you think would be cool to make. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.